Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the proper situations in which a man should wear black tie, also known as a tuxedo, or white tie, also known as a tailcoat ensemble. <laughs> If you're a longtime fan of our content, you'll know that we've covered the most formal of men's dress codes in great depth. We've got PDF guides for white tie, black tie, and morning dress all available in our shop here. And just recently, we completed two more videos on all of the differences between a tuxedo and a standard business suit. You can find the two videos in that series here. Today's video dovetails with the second part in that series, as we're going to be covering all of the social situations and events where wearing a tuxedo, or indeed a full tailcoat ensemble, is appropriate and correct. Before we begin with the specific scenarios, though, here's a bit of history on formal dress codes. Black tie and white tie are the two categories of men's formal evening wear, traditionally designed to be worn in the evening which is to say after six o'clock or after sundown, whichever comes first. The original purpose of these outfits was to be special dress codes that left behind the dirt and grime of the day's work that would accompany clothes worn during the day. In other words, they were really set aside to be unique. After the invention of the automobile and other modern conveniences, of course, the strict segregation between day clothes and evening clothes fell away somewhat in terms of practicality, but the distinctions remained purely in terms of aesthetics. In the Victorian era, white tie was expected to be worn at every evening function where women would be present, and black tie was only appropriate for less formal stag affairs. Between the World Wars, the tuxedo largely supplanted the tailcoat as standard evening wear, and the tailcoat then became relegated to extremely formal evening functions. And after World War II, the business suit became acceptable for semi-formal and even some formal gatherings both night and day. This meant that all formal wear became increasingly limited to only the most formal of events. Even today, it's still commonly accepted that the tuxedo and the tailcoat shouldn't be seen in broad daylight. Because this can be hard to avoid in some parts of the globe during the summer months, however, evening is alternatively defined as either sundown or 6 p.m., whichever comes first. Whatever the case, unless you happen to be a man who's working in the service or entertainment industries, the only acceptable scenario for being seen in a tuxedo or tailcoat in broad daylight is if you're traveling to an event where these dress codes will be worn and you don't also have a change of clothes. Also, there are a handful of state functions in Europe where tuxedos are worn in the daytime, although these are rare. In the United Kingdom, Western Europe, and Japan, the persistence of formal day wear as a viable dress code has meant that tuxedos and tailcoats are still not really seen until the evening in most circumstances. In the US, though, morning dress has all but disappeared, and most Americans now commonly think of the tuxedo as being all-purpose formal wear. You don't have to look any further than daytime weddings for this to be evident. Today, most formal affairs where the hosts have chosen to institute black tie as the formal dress code will explicitly state as much on their invitations. A few occasions where evening wear is expected or even welcomed still do exist outside of this invitation paradigm, however, and they're the ones we're going to cover in today's video. Let's get started today, then, with public events and entertainment. Historically, opera has been considered the most prestigious of all of the performing arts, and as such, men would dress accordingly when in attendance. While the days of mandatory tailcoats for attending the opera are long gone, it's not out of the question, especially in major metropolitan cities, to see some particularly well-dressed men attending the opera in black tie, or even sometimes white. Premier performances of the ballet, symphony, and theater are also often black tie optional. And for a guide on attending the opera, you can check out our related article here.
Next up, we'll cover private events with family, friends, or coworkers. White tie should only be worn if it's explicitly stated on the invitation. Still, there are a few functions where full dress is required, most of these being located in Europe. An example here is the famous Viennese Opera Ball, which is, in some circumstances, actually open to the public. In America, however, the white tie opportunities are fewer and far between, generally limited to things like debutante balls. Private black tie events do remain relatively popular, however. These are often large dinner dances or other events given by corporations or fraternal organizations. And as the middle class equivalent to the debutante ball, the prom will often feature a much more loose definition of what we would call formal dress. So while most might choose ensembles with loud colors and cheap fabrics, the young man who wears a properly styled tuxedo to his prom is going to stand head and shoulders above the others. The quinceañera, or celebration commemorating a Latin American girl's rise to 15 years of age, essentially similar in format to a more American Sweet 16 party, is often black tie optional in nature as well. Here's a side note. Formal evening wear is typically intended for adult occasions, so tailcoats and tuxedos are discouraged to be worn by preteen boys. An exception here is weddings, though in these specific circumstances, really only the junior ushers should be wearing tuxedos that are the same as the other members of the wedding party. Here's a simple way to think of this rule. If a boy is too young to be able to properly tie a bow tie himself, then he's too young to wear one. On the topic of weddings, however, marriage ceremonies are still generally held to more formal standards than other events, and a formal evening wedding is the grandest of all of these. If you're invited to a wedding ceremony that begins after 6 p.m., usually with a reception to follow, a black tie dress code is going to be common, if not white. Such affairs are relatively rare, though, especially in the United Kingdom, where weddings typically aren't held in the evening as a general rule. The most formal type of wedding ceremony that the average man is likely to attend is only going to require tuxedos of the groomsmen and usually just formally styled suits for every other man. For more information on what to wear as a groom or what to wear as a wedding guest, you can check out these related videos here. Now let's get into some more rare and unique situations, starting with evenings at sea. Ocean cruises do often still provide a man an opportunity to wear a tuxedo. In fact, some cruise lines pride themselves on their attention to the details of formality, even encouraging guests to dress up on the ship after 6 p.m. Some cruise lines will offer onboard formal wear rentals as well for those passengers who didn't bring a formal ensemble. The number of formal nights on a cruise line can vary widely depending on the line and the itinerary, however. And for example, the first and last nights of a cruise generally are never formal because on those nights, most of the luggage of the passengers is going to be packed away. Days in port are also similarly informal because they often wouldn't provide passengers enough time to change before dinner. If a man belongs to a fraternal organization, he may have a few more opportunities than usual to wear formal wear as well. Prestigious universities such as Cambridge and Oxford and organizations like the Masons will often have their members don full dress for particularly special occasions. These groups may have their own specific versions of formal wear codes, however, which means that what the men are wearing is really more of a uniform than true formal wear. Now, the average man probably won't find himself being invited to too many diplomatic functions, but just in case, here's a brief overview. While white tie gatherings remain a tradition in the royal courts of Europe, American presidents have only held two white tie dinners since 1989. President George W. Bush also did away with the custom of wearing white tie to the reception for the diplomatic corps in 2001. More often than not, then, White House functions today are typically black tie affairs. 
On a related note, though, U.S. presidents do still frequently speak at two of the last remaining white tie dinners in the country. The Gridiron Club Dinner, hosted by the oldest journalistic organization in Washington, and the Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation Dinner, which is a Catholic charities fundraiser held in New York. So, barring these specific cases then, what's the most sure way to know when you should wear black tie or white tie? In simplest terms, just consult your invitation. Prior to World War II, it was considered a faux pas to explicitly state a dress code on an invitation because of the universal understandings of what clothing to wear when that we mentioned at the beginning of the video. Today, however, especially in the United States, so few parties are truly formal in nature that mindful hosts will be sure to include a dress code on the invitation. Even so, in recent decades, hosts have begun to needlessly complicate things a little bit with more ambiguous variations of the traditional dress codes. For a video on one of the more well-known of these ambiguous dress codes, black tie optional, you can go here. And if a dress code isn't printed on an invitation and you're still unsure, just talk to your hosts directly and ask them what they'd prefer. You'll be glad you did. So, now that you know the occasions where wearing black tie and white tie is appropriate and even preferred, you should be able to seek them out if you'd like and look your best while you're there. If you need a refresher on the specific stylistic details for each of these dress codes, here's another reminder to take a look at our white tie and black tie PDF guides available in the Fort Belvedere shop. Also, check out the newly renovated black tie guide on the Gentleman's Gazette website. It's a treasure trove of information for anybody who wants to learn more about formal dress codes, their history, and all kinds of related information. As you can see, I'm wearing a tuxedo in today's video. It's a vintage model from the brand After Six, and I believe it dates to the mid-1950s. It's midnight blue in color, double-breasted in configuration, and features no vents, and it also has grosgrain peaked lapels. The trousers are pleated, and they also feature an ornate braid down the side of each leg. The suspenders are also black grosgrain silk, and they feature gold adjusters. I'm not wearing a waist covering today, of course, because the jacket is double-breasted, so I don't need one. My shirt has narrow front pleats, takes four shirt studs, and also has French cuffs to take cufflinks. The links and studs are all gold and they feature onyx as the stone. My red carnation boutonniere, single-ended grosgrain bow tie, and black silk socks are all from Fort Belvedere and you can find all of them in the shop here. Meanwhile, my pocket square is in plain white linen, and I've just got it folded in a square fold today so as not to be too busy with the carnation boutonniere. And finally, my opera pumps are vintage models from Allen Edmonds, and they feature wide, flat bows. <laughs>